I've been wanting to do this one for a while. It popped up a while ago. Um, and I've seen it a few times more. <laughs> like he just messaged. Dean. <sighs> Bro, shut up. <laughs> Read this. Call me Jesus, but Danny Kelly is the white easy E. Sick. So that, I'll make myself smaller here. You can see his fucking Facebook page. See, he puts out his music videos. The one I'm looking for is Paranoid Schizophrenia. This is the one that caught my eye that I've been wanting to watch since he put it out. I was speaking to someone last night, another person in the scene. They were mentioning their schizophrenia and sort of. It seems to be all too common. Someone will have a break and take some meds, return to sort of like what reality is. I don't understand it fully and I would like to. I really would. So, um, here, let's. Oh, okay, link in the comments. There we go. Now, I've been using cannabis since I was about 14. I like the space in the track so far. This sounds like a younger person talking. It doesn't sound like Danny's voice there. He says, I was using cannabis since I was 14. Cannabis since I was about 14. And I started abusing it since I was 18 or 19. And um, on occasions, I would get quite paranoid. But I felt that I could handle it, you know, because it, it, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. But then I became delusional. I became paranoid to use my phone. I became paranoid to leave my house. This is my story about schizophrenia, let me speak. Look man, I was smoking an ounce of green a week. Was treating my woman like shit, I was a paranoid freak. I was nine stone or something I just couldn't eat. I was watching conspiracies all day and all night. Looked into the adrenochrome and gave myself a fright. What I was learning wasn't good for my mental health. What I discovered made me want to kill myself. August 2019's when my psychosis started. I was running in front of cars, I ended up getting carted. They let me out of the hospital, they said I was fine. I started hearing voices, I was losing my mind. It was like I was alive. Okay. So to start off, he's smoking a lot of cannabis. Now, I've never smoked an ounce a week, except in small bursts. You know, like during harvest time. Um, and I've been through all those videos too, Danny. Adrenochrome, Bilderberg, fucking all of that shit, you know. Brave New World, Aldous Huxley. There is a sort of, there is, that media is out there on YouTube, okay, and it's all connected, it's a big story that people have put together and a lot of people believe in and things like that, but I don't, I don't necessarily believe in any sort of other or a they that control bad things in the world, I just think it's too chaotic, but there was times when I was nearly convinced of those sort of things. If it, if it wasn't, so, like, <clears throat> I used my paranoia in a productive way, kind of. Like, I would say to my friends, I'm going to spend six months learning about flat earth theory. And I'm going to try and forget everything I know about physics in the world. And, and I'm just going to immerse myself in flat earth for six months. And I did that. I watched all the media that they would be watching, like podcasts between each other. And I tried to believe it. And I followed all the arguments then to their thread, threaded conclusions and a lot of it didn't make sense, a lot of it did. And in the end, the earth's round. <laughs> but while I was questioning things, the, the way people put the arguments forward in videos are so convincing that you may as well just believe them. Um... But I had this thing, like, I knew I was operating in a way where I was trying to believe things that were probably not true. And I wanted to believe and trying to believe 
can almost get you to believe. Um, I was bored. That's why I done that shit. Because I was stoned out my box. I didn't want to do anything else except sit and watch videos and try and get some information that nobody else had so that I could bring it back and go, look, guys, I'm interested. Okay? <laughs> it's not really maybe what Danny's talking about. I'm not sure why he ended up watching this sort of stuff. But there's also, there's like a, I'm not naming names, but there's people around me that I know that still believe this stuff. And I'm not sure if you would call them schizophrenic or delusional or whatever. Because belief's belief, like, these are hard things to fact check in the end. Alright, let's get back to the music because this is about Danny. Yeah, quite paranoid. But I felt that I could handle it, you know, because it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but then... And again, I felt like I could handle it. Doing it in the format where I'd spoke to my friends first and says, right, I'm going to get into this fucking topic for six months. That, that was my lifeline, that was my rope, that was my memory that I created that says, right, you're diving into a delusional space right now. There's your tether back to life. Remember, you're doing this as a investigative process. It's not because it's real, you know? It's like that sphere is art. You go in and you interpret everything that's going on, you come out with a message, okay? Those people in that world are just violent skeptics of the mainstream. And that's their first position that they take. And then they look into flat earth. And then they believe that because they're very skeptical of everything like they don't believe in nasa so how can you have a picture of the world okay the the, the picture from earth from outer space is fake therefore we can't trust all the nasa missions so how do we even know that the, the world's a ball that way and then they're relying on certain weird forms of math and sayings like water always finds its level which it certainly does not you can alter the physics around situation so that water doesn't always stay level. Motherfucker, you ever seen a wave? Come on. Right? Okay, sorry. You can see I'm getting triggered by that shit. Right. Danny, I love you, man. Let's get back to this. I became delusional. I became paranoid to use my phone. I became paranoid to leave my house. This is my story about schizophrenia, let me speak Look man, I was smoking an ounce of green a week Was treating my woman like shit, I was a paranoid freak I was nine stone or something I just couldn't eat I was watching conspiracies all day and all night Looked into adrenochrome and gave myself a fright What I was learning wasn't good for my mental health What I discovered made me want to kill myself August 2019's when my psychosis started I was running in front of cars, I ended up getting carted They let me out of the hospital, they said I was fine I started hearing voices, I was losing my mind It was like I was alive in a fucking nightmare I was seeing things that weren't even there Thought people were aiming guns up to my window Thought I was getting hunted off the fall of Glasgow I was screaming at people, don't fucking follow me Honestly, I just wanted the ground to swallow me The voices were telling me to get a lock back So I went and stole one from my best pal's flat Was screaming in the doctors, I need an appointment now The receptionist phoned the police on me, the mad cow Went home and an hour later, the police chapped the door I opened up and they said, were you the doctors at half four? Said I, how it's up? They said I was being abusive Said they're coming in This is fucking awesome storytelling, by the way I, I can't, yeah, I'm immersed in this, like I like the way he fucking rhymes half four. Weren't even there. Thought people were aiming guns up to my window. Thought I was getting hunted off the fall of Glasgow. I was screaming at people, don't fucking follow me. Honestly, I just wanted the ground to swallow me. The voices were telling me to get a lock back. So I went and stole one from my best pal's flat. Was screaming in the doctors, I need an appointment now. The receptionist phoned the police on me, the mad cow. Went home and an hour later, the police chapped the door. 
opened up and they said we got the doctors at half four Said I how it's up, they said I was being abusive Said they're coming in and they started to push us I ran into the kitchen and grabbed the biggest knife I could find I ran at them with it, they sprayed me till I was blind I got restrained and turkeyed in the fucking stair They must have pressed the panic alarm cause police were everywhere Down the court cells I head buttied a cunt he never done anything, was a heavy rat stunt I go bail, fuck knows how I never got remanded Everybody stopped coming to see me, I felt stranded My woman left me, I pushed everybody away Nobody could stand the crazy shit that I would do Walked into the barbers, never had a penny in my name Got my hair cut and said I'm no fucking pain I tried to headbutt the owner and I got strangled Four cunts jumped on top of me, man, I got manhandled I punched big holes in my walls and went mad I boiled a full kettle and flung over my dad he never done anything, I know it was fucking sad I hate looking back at the shit I'd done, I feel bad The voices were telling me to commit suicide So I ran in front of a bus that skidded to the side Every night I would cry myself to fucking sleep Pulled a knife out of my neighbour cause I thought he was a creep Thought the cunt the chippy was poisoning in my food I ended up starving myself, man it wasn't good I chased the young team with a glass check Thought everybody wanted to fight me, man I was a wreck I got caught with a lot back and get fully committed If I never got to jail when I did, I'd probably be dead I was talking to myself for exercise The voices were telling me I was gonna get terrorised A lot of people say that, right? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's not something that's brought up a lot, actually. But, jail. Jail can do a lot of good. That legal process. Like, it's not nice that they shove you into a ward with other folk that, like, everyone's fucked up, right? But if you were going to kill yourself, something like this can be a, a wake-up call. And it can... Get you clean off the drugs that you were on. I know you can find that shit in jail too. But it's a start, maybe. I've never been in jail. I'm not really... Involved with that sort of stuff. Like, so... I can imagine it can go either way once you're there. You can end up going down a bad route. Or maybe you use it to... Pull yourself together and get yourself out. I'm so glad he's found music, man. I'm so fucking happy. Last check. Thought everybody wanted to fight me, man, I was a wreck. I got caught with a lot back and get fully committed. If I never got to jail when I did, I'd probably be dead. I was talking to myself for exercise. The voices were telling me I was gonna get terrorised. I put all sorts of sugar in a tea and scalded a pass, man. Attacked everybody before the attack me was a plan. Only been in two days and I was already doing the digger. I said I was acting crazy, I just sniggered I smashed up my telly and swallowed the fuse I boiled my kettle and tried to float over the screws They broke my fucking ribs and gave us a black eye I couldn't breathe man, I felt like I was gonna die I seen the psychiatrist and told him everything I had to tell somebody I couldn't hold it in Got diagnosed a paranoid schizophrenic and put in meds Couple of weeks later I felt better in the head I ended up in the highest dose of olanzapine And I ended up in the highest dose of sertraline I stopped yeah. Hearing voices and I wasn't paranoid. I was no longer the type of person you'd avoid. Let me know, like, sertraline made my dick not work. And I told the doctor, that's alright, it's worth it. Got another doctor a month later, he's like, bro, you cannot be on this. Female doctor prescribed it, male doctor's like, bro, <laughs> you need your dick working, bro. So he took me off it. I think we're five months down the line now. I'm doing all right, my dick works. I feel happy. I got shit to do, it's this. Hi guys. This is my thing. This is what's stopping me from going fucking mental. And this is what's stopping Danny from going fucking mental. And it's lovely, it's great. It's cool. Back to normal and started smashing the weights. Even though I was in prison, man, I felt great. I thought I was gonna be in that state until I died. Thank fuck for the meds, man, cause I was fried. Ain't that a fucking story, man? The start, the meat, the middle, and a happy fucking ending. That's cool. Danny, keep this up, man. This is fucking awesome. I'm so glad I got to listen to that. 
I kind of understand schizophrenia a little bit more. At least, like, I know that it can... Ah. I don't know. There's something deep about schizophrenia I want to understand. Like, what causes the break? What happens on the inside of this fucking thing? Like, the story is about what happens. Like, running about cars, scalding folk feeling like people are aiming guns at the window and that that's all too common to hear about because those are the exciting parts but for me it's like what's the root cause tell me what the root cause is someone tell me and i don't even know what i would do with that knowledge it's just that's how that's that's what i want to know and i don't know if that's available there i know that dopamine and stuff like that has a lot to do with it this regulation of like neurotransmitters but then your environment as well, like I heard about this one guy who, back when the looms, back in the, the day when they were working with textiles and wool from sheep, and that uh, industry was being built, so there was these complex machines, they were the most complex of the day, and so a schizophrenic back then was trying to work out how his body was moving through time and space when he was walking, and he thought that his body was attached to strings, the cosmic strings that were pulling and tearing, and moving his body, causing all the actions in the world. And what that, what is a case study, right? So what, what they're trying to explain is that schizophrenics will often use information as explanations to things. And it's the best information at the time that they had, the most complex sort of types of technology that was available. These days you've got satellites tracking people. Schizophrenics, schizophrenics are worried about satellites and phone calls being tapped right those weren't available back then but it's like every sort of there's this creeping process where like the paranoia will be put onto something that's new or present or so i feel like paranoia is definitely an interaction with the environment it's not really a completely internal process right it's you versus the world or the world versus you <sighs> right i'm gonna shut up Catch you guys later. Like and subscribe.